Welcome to the Frogs of Sweden podcast. We figured if Sweden didn't have frogs, frogs wouldn't have Sweden. This is the story of how a tribe of frogs who reside in geodesic domes release love into the VLF wavelengths of the Earth. Also known as the magnetic fields to hopefully stop the evil and suffering of humankind. to you what a syllogism is. Ah, yes, a syllogism. I, 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 I can't get over it. It's, it, it's unthinkable. Uh, a syllogism consists of a main proposition, a secondary one, and a conclusion. What conclusion? I just, I, I, I can't get over it. Yes, I can see you can't. Well, it was a rhinoceros, all right, so it was a rhinoceros. It's miles away by now, miles away. But you must see how fantastic that is. A rhinoceros loose in the town and you don't bat an eyelid. It, it shouldn't be allowed. <sighs> Put your hand in front of your mouth. Yes, yes, it shouldn't be allowed. It's dangerous. I, I hadn't realized. But, you know, don't worry about it. It won't get us here. We ought to protest to the town council. What's the council there for? Uh, oh, excuse me. Perhaps the rhinoceros escaped from the zoo. You're daydreaming. But I'm wide awake. Awake or asleep, it's the same thing. But there is some difference. <laughs> That's not the point. But you just said being awake and being asleep were the same thing. You didn't understand. There's no difference between dreaming awake and dreaming asleep. I do dream. Life is a dream. You're certainly dreaming when you say the rhinoceros escaped from the zoo. I only said perhaps. Because there's been no zoo in our town since the animals were destroyed in the plague. Ages ago. Then perhaps it came from the circus. What circus are you talking about? I don't know. It's some traveling circus. You know perfectly well that the council banned all traveling performers from the district. There haven't been any since we were children. In that case, maybe it's been hiding ever since in the surrounding swamps. The, sur the surrounding swamps? The sur my poor friend, you live in a thick haze of alcohol. Mm, that's very true. It seems to mount from my stomach. It's clouding your brain. Where do you know of any surrounding swamps? Our district is known as Little Castille because the land is so arid. How do I know then? Perhaps it's been hiding under a stone or maybe it's been nesting on some withered branch. If you think you're being witty, you are very much mistaken. You're just being a bore with your, with your, with your stupid paradoxes. You're incapable of talking seriously. Today, yes, and, and only today because of... Because of, uh... Well, today is the same as any other day. Well, not quite as much. Your witticisms are not very inspired. I wasn't trying to be. I just, I cannot bear people to try to make fun of me. My dear Jean, I'd never allow myself to. <laughs> My dear Berenger, you are allowing yourself. Oh no, never. I'd never allow myself to. Yes, you would. You've just done so. But how could you possibly think? I think what is true. But I assure you. That you were making fun of me. 
You really can be obstinate sometimes. And now you're calling me a mule into the bargain. Even you must see how insulting you're being. It would have never entered my mind. You have no mind. All the more reason why it would never enter it. There are certain things which enter the minds of even people without one. That's impossible. And why, pray, is it impossible? Because it's impossible. Then kindly explain to me why it's impossible. As you seem to imagine, you can explain everything. I don't imagine anything of the kind. Then why do you act as if you do? And I repeat, why are you being so insulting to me? I'm not insulting you. Far from it. You know what tremendous respect I have for you. Well, in that case, why do you contradict me? Oh, look out! Oh! I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, no harm done. No harm done. Oh, yo, you're so clumsy. Oh, and now I'm clumsy. You're calling me clumsy. Yes, you are. You are being so, so insulting to me. <sighs> Here is an example of a syllogism. The cat has four paws. Isadora and Foucault both have four paws, therefore, Isadora and Foucault are cats. My dog has got four paws. Then it's a cat. So, then logically speaking, my dog must be a cat? Logically, yes, but the contrary is also true. Logic is a very beautiful thing. As long as it's not abused. Another syllogism. All cats die. Socrates is dead. Therefore, Socrates is a cat. And he's got four paws. That's true. I've got a cat named Socrates. There you are, you see. So, so Socrates was a cat, was he? Logic has just revealed the fact to us. Let's get back to our cats. I'm all ears. The cat Isidore has four paws. How do you know? It's stated in the hypothesis. Oh yes, in the hypothesis. Foucault also has four paws. So how many paws have Foucault and Isidore? Separately or together? Separately or together, it all depends. Um, six, eight, eight paws. Logic involves mental arithmetic, you see. It certainly has many aspects. There are no limits to logic. I'm going to show you. If I take two paws away from these cats, how many does each have left? Oh, that's not so easy. On the contrary, it's simple. It may be simple for you, but it's not for me. Come on, exercise your mind. Concentrate. I don't see how. Oh, you have to be told everything. Take a sheet of paper and calculate. If you take six paws from the two cats, how many paws are left to each cat? Uh, just a moment. Three, six, seven, six, six. I'm so tired. I've been tired for years. It's exhausting to drag the weight of my own body about. That's alcoholic neurasthenia. Drinker's gloom. I'm conscious of my body all the time as if it were made of lead or as if it were carrying another man around on my back. I can't seem to get used to myself. I don't even know if I am me. Then as soon as I take a drink, the lead slips away and I recognize myself. I become me again. Come in. It's open. Hello, Jean. You don't look so well. I don't feel... I don't feel well at all. Oh, I'm sorry. What do you think it is? I don't know exactly. There's something wrong somewhere. Do you feel weak? Not at all, on the contrary. I feel full of beans. Well, I meant just a passing weakness. It happens to everybody. It never happens to me. Well, perhaps you're too healthy then. Too much energy can be a bad thing. It unsettles the nervous system. My nervous system is in perfect order. I'm in sound mind and limb. I come from a very long line. Um, I know you do. Perhaps you've just got a chill. Look, have you got a temperature? I don't know, yes. Probably I have a touch of fever. My head aches. Just a slight migraine. Would you like me to leave you alone? No, stay. You don't worry me. Your voice is hoarse, too. Hoarse? A uh, bit hoarse, yes. That's why I didn't recognize Why should I be hoarse? My voice hasn't changed. It's, it's yours that's changed. Mine? Why not? It's possible. I hadn't noticed. I sometimes wonder if you're capable of noticing anything. Actually, it's, it's my forehead that hurts. I, I must have given it a knock. When did you do that? I don't know. I don't remember it happening. Uh, well, but it must have hurt you. Well, I must have done it while I was sleeping. The shock would have wakened you up. Y you must have had just had a dream and you knocked yourself and... 
I never dreamed. Your headache must have come on while you were asleep and you've forgotten you dreamed, or rather you only remember subconsciously. Yes, subconsciously. Me. I'm a master of my own thoughts. My mind doesn't wander. I think straight. I always think straight. Yes, I know that. I, I haven't made myself clear. Well, then make yourself clearer. And you needn't bother me any with any of your unpleasant observations to me. One often has the impression that one has knocked oneself when one has a headache. If you really knocked yourself, you'd have a bump. Oh, you have got one. You do have a bump, in fact. A bump? Just a tiny one. Where? There. It starts just above your nose. I have no bump. We've never had bumps in my family. Well, have you got a mirror? But there's the limit. Oh, oh I, I can feel something. I, I'm going to have a look in the bathroom. It's true. I have gone bump. So you see, I, I did knock myself in. You don't look well. Your, your skin is quite green. And you seem to delight in saying disagreeable things to me. Have you taken a look at yourself lately? Forgive me. I didn't mean to upset you. <laughs> That's hard to believe. Your breathing's very heavy. Does, does your throat hurt? If your throat hurts, it's probably just a touch of Quincy. Why should I have a touch of Quincy? It's nothing to be ashamed of. I sometimes get it. Let me feel your pulse. No, it'll pass. Your pulse is normal. You needn't get alarmed. I'm not alarmed in the slightest. Why should I be? You're right. A few days' rest will put you right. I have no time to rest. I must go and buy some food. There's not much the matter with you if you're hungry. But even so, you ought to take a few days' rest. It's wise to take care. Uh, has the doctor been to see you? I don't need a doctor. Oh, but you ought to call the doctor. I'm not going to call the doctor because I don't want the doctor. I can look after myself. Yeah, you shouldn't reject medical advice. Doctors invent illnesses that don't exist. They do it in good faith, just for the pleasure of looking after people. They invent illnesses, they invent them, I tell you. Well, perhaps they do, but after they invent them, they cure them. I only have confidence in veterinary surgeons. There! Your veins look swollen. They're jutting out. It's a sign of virility. Well, of course it's a sign of health and strength, but... What do you think you're doing? Scrutinizing me as if I were some strange animal? It's your skin. What's my skin got to do with you? I don't go on about your skin, do I? Well, it's just that it seems to be changing color all the time. It's, it's going green. It's hardening as well. Stop mulling me about! What's the matter with you? You're getting on my nerves! Perhaps it's more serious than I thought. We, we must call the doctor. <laughs> Leave that thing alone. You mind your own business. All right. It was for your own good. I know better than you. What's good for me? You're breathing very hard. One breathes as best as one can. You don't like the way I breathe on. I don't like the way you breathe. You breathe is too feeble. Can't even hear it. It's as if you're going to drop dead any moment. <laughs> I know I'm not as strong as you. I don't keep trying to get you to call the doctor, do I? Leave people to do as they please. Don't get angry with me. You know very well I'm your friend. There's no such thing as friendship. I don't believe in your friendship. That's a very hurtful thing to say. There's nothing for you to get hurt about. My dear Jean. I'm not your dear Jean. You're certainly in a very misanthropic mood today. Yes, I am very misanthropic. Very misanthropic indeed. I like you're probably still angry with me over our silly quarrel yesterday. But I admit it was my fault. That's why I came over to say I was sorry. What quarrel are you talking about? I told you just now. You know about the rhinoceros. It's not that I hate people. I'm just indifferent to them. Or rather, they disgust me. And they better keep out of my way. Or I'll run them down. You know very well I should never stand in your way. I've got one in my life. And I'm making straight for it. I'm sure you're right, but I feel you're passing through a moral crisis. You, you mustn't excite yourself. It's, it's bad for you. I feel uncomfortable in my clothes and my pajamas are to me as well. But whatever's the matter with your skin? Can't you leave my skin alone? I certainly wouldn't want to change it for yours. It's gone like leather. If that makes it more solid, it's weatherproof. You're getting greener and greener. You've got color made here today. You're seeing things. You, you things are raging again. I did yesterday, but not today. It's a result of all your past watches. 
I promise you to turn over a new leaf. I take notice when my friends like you give me advice, and I never am humiliated. On the contrary. I don't care what you feel. Oh, what? What? What did you say? I didn't say anything. I, I just went because I felt like it. I can't breathe. Just, just, just think about it. You must admit that we have a philosophy that animals don't share, and an irreplaceable set of values, which has taken centuries of human civilization to develop. What if we demolish that? We'll be better off. I know you don't mean that seriously. You're joking. It's, it's just a poetic fantasy. I, I, I never realized you were a poet. That's not what you believe fundamentally. I, I know you too well. You must know as well as I do that mankind... Don't talk to me about mankind. I mean the human individual. Humanism. Humanism is all washed up. You are a ridiculous old sentimentalist. But you must admit that the mind... Just believe me. You're talking rubbish. Rubbish? Oh, rubbish. I'm amazed to hear you say that, Jean, really. You must be out of your mind. You wouldn't like to be a rhinoceros yourself now, would you? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Can you speak more clearly? I didn't catch what you just said. You swallowed your words. What? Can your ears open? I said, what's wrong with being a rhinoceros? I'm up for change. It's not like you to say a thing like that. Oh, you, you really? You, you, must, you must be out of your mind. You, you mustn't get into such a state. Calm down. I hardly recognize you anymore. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 